Have you ever seen SpaceX use the Super Draco thrusters on the Dragon spacecraft? Probably not, right? But these engines are at the heart of Dragon's new landing method, a concept from the past that the company has revived, and this method is exactly what makes Dragon the safest spacecraft in the world, surpassing even the Starliner. Let's find out everything in today's episode. In space exploration, ensuring astronauts return safely to Earth has always been a critical challenge and the top priority. While parachute technology has been a reliable solution since the earliest days of aerospace history, SpaceX has developed a backup system for its Crew Dragon spacecraft. This system leverages the Super Draco engines, originally designed as an abort mechanism to protect the crew in the event of a rocket failure during launch. Specifically, the eight engines, arranged in four pairs around the spacecraft, can generate enough thrust to propel the crew capsule away from a failing or potentially explosive rocket during the critical moments of ascent. According to Steve Stitch, engineers at SpaceX have extended the functionality of the Super Draco system. It's an emergency contingency capability for landing, where if the main parachutes were all to fail, the Super Draco thrusters will fire right before the vehicle would make contact with the water. It would be an emergency configuration to save the crew on a really bad day. To add to this, William Gerstenmeyer from SpaceX shared more insights. This is the first time it flies on a NASA mission. He explained, The way it works is, in the case all the parachutes totally fail, this essentially fires the thrusters at the very end, giving the crew a chance to land safely and essentially escape the vehicle. So it's not used in any, you know, partial conditions, since the Dragon can land with one chute out. We can land with other failures in the chute system as well. The system works when the capsule detects that there's a problem, and it fires the, essentially the Draco thrusters at the very end, and then provides a tolerable landing through the crew. So it's a, it's a true deep contingency. Now even in the initial design of the crew Dragon, SpaceX applied a strict principle of redundancy to its landing parachute system. The spacecraft was originally equipped with three main parachutes, calculated to ensure a safe landing even if one failed. However, NASA, with its high safety standards, required SpaceX to add a fourth parachute. While this decision was made to further enhance safety, it's worth noting that the additional chute might not have been strictly necessary. The adaptability of Crew Dragon in emergency scenarios is just so remarkable. In the extreme case where only one parachute remains operational, the descent speed would increase significantly, subjecting the crew to higher g-forces upon water impact. However, thanks to the robust design and durability of the crew cabin, the spacecraft can still ensure the survival of its astronauts during an ocean landing. While the likelihood of a complete parachute system failure is incredibly low, almost negligible, SpaceX's decision to incorporate the Super Draco thrusters as an emergency landing option demonstrates their commitment to the defense in depth philosophy. This multi layered approach ensures that even in the most dire scenarios, where all parachute backups fail, the thruster based landing system serves as a critical last line of defense, potentially making the difference between catastrophe and survival. Now, let's compare this to Boeing's Starliner. In the race to develop commercial spacecraft for NASA, SpaceX and Boeing have taken distinctly different approaches to safety and escape system design. SpaceX has permanently integrated its Super Draco engines into the Crew Dragon's crew module, a stark contrast to traditional solutions like launch escape towers or systems attached to service modules, which is the route Boeing has taken with Starliner. Boeing's escape system is housed in the spacecraft's trunk, a section that is jettisoned before re-entry begins. This design introduces a critical vulnerability. Once the trunk is discarded, Starliner is left with only small thrusters, severely limiting its control capabilities during descent and recovery. This distinction becomes even more significant when considering the landing strategies of the two spacecraft. Boeing opted for land-based landings for Starliner, a choice that considerably increases the risk in the event of parachute system failure. Starliner's landing sequence relies on a precise and tightly timed chain of events. First, it must deploy drogue chutes, followed by three main parachutes, one less than Crew Dragon's four. Then, it must execute two additional maneuvers, jettisoning its heat shield and deploying airbags to cushion the impact on land. The critical weakness in this design lies in Starliner's lack of backup measures in case one or more parachutes fail to deploy. On top of that, any malfunction during the heat shield jettisoning or airbag deployment could lead to catastrophic outcomes, ranging from severe spacecraft damage to a high risk of injury for the crew. In fact, the concept of using thrusters for landing, similar to Falcon 9, has been part of SpaceX's vision from the start. When Dragon 2 was introduced, SpaceX promoted it as a spacecraft capable of landing precisely anywhere on Earth, with helicopter-like flexibility. The initial design focused entirely on utilizing the Super Draco engines as the primary landing mechanism, no parachutes involved. The plan was for the spacecraft to fire its eight Super Draco engines to actively slow the descent of the capsule. 
Once its speed was reduced to zero, the capsule would softly land on retractable legs at a designated landing site. This approach promised to significantly reduce the time needed to refurbish and prepare the Dragon for its next mission. At the time, SpaceX's ambitions didn't stop at revolutionizing Earth landings. The company had plans to use a Dragon variant to perform landings on Mars. This project, impressively named Red Dragon, was considered technically feasible by SpaceX's engineers. The atmosphere of the Red Planet is far thinner than Earth's, only about 1% as thick. In the vision for the Red Dragon mission, this thin atmosphere meant that the spacecraft couldn't rely on conventional parachute systems for landing. Recognizing that propulsive landing technology would be critical for future Mars exploration missions, SpaceX proactively developed and tested this capability here on Earth, using Dragon as a testing platform for the groundbreaking technologies needed for interplanetary missions down the line. While the concept of a Dragon spacecraft capable of propulsive landings on solid ground was incredibly promising, SpaceX ultimately abandoned this plan and the entire Red Dragon project. NASA, acting as both regulator and primary customer, expressed concerns about the safety of such a landing method. The U.S. Space Agency argued that if SpaceX wanted to pursue this approach, they would need to conduct extensive additional testing to demonstrate the safety of the technology for crewed missions. In the end, NASA preferred parachutes. In the original design, the landing legs were meant to deploy from underneath the spacecraft, passing through the heat shield. However, creating openings in the heat shield introduced potential weak points, increasing the risk of failure during atmospheric re-entry, the most dangerous phase of any space mission. This concern is entirely valid. Just look at the heat shield of NASA's Orion spacecraft after the Artemis Y mission. During re-entry, some separation bolts melted, leaving gaps that allowed heat to seep behind the shield, raising the possibility of catastrophic structural failure. Even now, NASA scientists are struggling to address this issue, causing inevitable delays to Artemis II. In theory, SpaceX could have continued developing this propulsive landing technology. However, doing so would have required the company to invest heavily in dedicated test flights. They couldn't leverage their regular cargo resupply missions to experiment with this technology because NASA had understandable concerns about the safety of the cargo, primarily the invaluable scientific samples and experimental results from the International Space Station. And most importantly, SpaceX already had Starship, known at the time as the BFR, Big Falcon Rocket. Starship was designed to replace SpaceX's entire lineup of spacecraft, including the Dragon and the Falcon family of rockets. SpaceX clearly understood that Starship could render the Dragon obsolete within just a few years. Starship was engineered to do everything Dragon could, only far more efficiently. Most critically, it was built to support interplanetary missions. As a result, continuing to pour money, time, and effort into developing propulsive landing technology for Dragon would have been a strategically inefficient investment. Instead, SpaceX made a highly pragmatic decision to revert to the time-tested method of splashdown recovery using parachutes. This approach, proven reliable over decades of aerospace history. This groundbreaking project has the potential to redefine the entire space industry and usher in a new era of space exploration. To ensure you don't miss any key updates on this thrilling journey, make sure to subscribe to our channel. We're committed to providing in-depth analysis and the latest news on SpaceX's every step towards conquering the cosmos.